Don't forget, you can reach the latest episode of Potomac Watch anytime. Just ask your smart speaker, play the opinion Potomac Watch podcast. That is, play the opinion Potomac Watch podcast. From the opinion pages of the Wall Street Journal, this is Potomac Watch. Welcome back. I'm Paul Go with uh, Kim Strassel and Bill McGurn. And uh, let's turn to another subject, Mitch McConnell, Republican leader of the Senate. Since 2007, longest serving Senate leader has announced that he will step down as leader at the end of this term. And let's listen to a clip of him announcing his decision on the Senate floor. So it's time for me to think about another season. I love the Senate. It's been my life. There may be more distinguished members of this body throughout our history, but I doubt there were any with any more admiration for the Senate. After all this time, I still got a thrill walking into the Capitol and especially on this venerable floor, knowing that we, each of us, have the honor to represent our states and do the important work of our country. But Father, time remains undefeated. A moving statement by uh, Senator McConnell. Bill, how do you see his legacy? Oh, I think it's for a Republican. It's a great legacy. You know, I think there's confusion about what an individual senator can be and what a majority leader has to be. You can't get the ideological purity in a leader. They have to hold the conference together and make deals and keep your eye on the larger prize and get things through. There are some votes that Senator McConnell took you know, on the Inflation Reduction Act, I think it was, uh, or the CHIPS Act. No, it wasn't Inflation Reduction Act. He opposed that. It was the infrastructure bill and the CHIPS Act. Yeah. And I would oppose that. But in the larger scheme, I mean, he's also an example. Donald Trump's probably greatest achievement as president was three justices on the Supreme Court that are pretty good. And that is thanks to Senator McConnell. It just points out that, you know, as president, just as you can't rule by executive order, you can't get your agenda through without working with your Republican allies. And I think that holding up Garland, I mean, people should be forever in his debt for keeping Garland off the Supreme Court. But he held it through. He's willing to take the arrows. And I love this manner. You know, he'd go out there and mumble some statement. I Read the legislation by the same (laughs) gentleman from this. And, you know, you wouldn't take him that seriously. And you know that he fixed the system so he would get his way. He had purpose to everything he did. So I think we owe him a lot of gratitude for showing what a majority leader can do. And I think we'll miss him. Whoever is chosen, no matter how good, won't have immediately the experience that he did. And we'll see the problems. I'll be curious to see if the Republican Party hangs together or they empower a wing that just divides themselves going into um, the elections and next year. The uh, episode you mentioned about uh, Merrick Garland was nominated by Barack Obama to be um, uh, on the Supreme Court when uh, Antonin Scalia died suddenly in uh, February of 2016. McConnell announced immediately that he, as majority leader at the time, would not hold a vote on confirmation. Took enormous uh, public heat for that, but he was able to make it stick because he had the confidence and the support of his entire caucus, which is pretty broad-based ideologically. And that runs from Susan Collins in Maine to the most conservative members. And he was able to hold that seat open and to say it will be filled by the next president. And of course, when Donald Trump won, he was able to fill that seat who became Justice Neil Gorsuch. But for the election in 2016, my own view is that that open seat created an enormous uh, motivation for many conservative voters who otherwise had doubts about Donald Trump in that election to come out and vote for him because they viewed the majority at the Supreme Court was at stake at the time with Justice Scalia's death. It was 4-4. Oh, absolutely. This was, uh, I think, a huge reason. I mean, millions of people on the right came out to vote because they understood that what was at stake here and what McConnell set up was this understanding it wasn't just the presidency, but the Senate and the Supreme Court that were all on the ballot and at risk here. And I think that played an enormous role in Donald Trump's victory. You know, one thing else, and I, I don't think he always gets enough credit for it. We're talking about some of the things that McConnell has had these incredible victories for. And, and obviously, judicial nominations, not just the Supreme Court, they confirmed 
234 judges during Trump's tenure, 54 current circuit nominees and three Supreme Court justices. He has done a lot of other things on uh, take another issue where he was very strong, even though it was very unpopular, campaign finance and free speech at a time when the entire media conglomerate and even many on the right were, oh, we need more rules that make it harder to allow people to campaign. And that included, for instance, John McCain leading that fight. Mitch McConnell really stood tall. And I think that's been an important issue for the country and First Amendment protections. But also, He's an institutionalist, and that is something he doesn't get enough credit for, but it's so important these days. Democrats completely abandoned any care for standing up for the Senate as an institution and started taking orders from the White House long ago. Mitch McConnell believes in the institution of the Senate and that it is a separate branch of government. And that caused him friction, for instance, at times when Donald Trump was president. He just wanted Mitch McConnell to roll over and McConnell wouldn't. But I think it's been very important at a day and age when so many of our standards and precedents are going down the tubes. He has stood a little bit as a bulwark, for instance, like the legislative filibuster and different sort of procedures and rules in the Senate that I think have been important to preserving that institution as a body of trust. Very important point, Kim, I think, particularly as you go forward. The truth is that Donald Trump will never forgive Mitch McConnell for the speech he gave after the January 6th events and after the vote of not to impeach him again, failed trial in the Senate. After the second impeachment, he gave an excoriating speech about Trump's behavior, even though he did not support impeaching or convicting Trump after that impeachment, though something like, what, six or eight of the Republicans did at the time. Interesting historical uh, counterfactual. What would have happened if Mitch McConnell had said uh, he was coming out to convict Donald Trump at that second impeachment? Well, we'll never know. Mitch McConnell is, of course, 82 years old, and that's a factor in his departure here. We'll have to take up the battle for succeeding Mitch McConnell at another show. We've been gabbing quite a lot today about these subjects. So thank you for listening. And thank you, Kim. And thank you, Bill. We're here every day on Potomac Watch. Thanks for listening.